Time for a sketchbook tour. It's finally full. Hello everyone. I'm Caroline and this is my sketchbook number six. I started this book on the 4th of August. And as you can see, it's a really meaty one. There's lots of colour in this. And the reason it's so squidgeable, boink, 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 is because I've done a lot of watercolour paintings in this. I've also done a lot of manga. When I first start this sketchbook, you'll think, is that all she does is manga? Yes, I've done a lot at the beginning and then I slowly started to do other things. So let's get stuck in. I can hardly wait. And this is the first page, which isn't very exciting. All it is, is the back of a different drawing. But let's have a look, see what sort of drawings I've been doing and see how I've been progressing. For many of you who have been following my art journey right from the start, I started, oh, it's about 10 months ago now. I'm progressing every sketchbook. I can see improvement, but I've still got a long way to go. But I must say that I'm thoroughly enjoying the journey. I got myself two books from Christopher Hart and decided I was going to work through those. As I'm not doing college or anything, then I really needed some system to get me working at things I needed to do in some sort of lucid order. So these are works that I did from that book. And then I really liked doing the kanji symbols on them. I wrote in the margin here what these kanji symbols were because if I look now, I would have no idea. A bit of a clue with all the hearts going on, but that's the kanji symbol for love. They're really difficult, but quite fulfilling when you actually get to the end. It looks a bit like what it's supposed to. I quite enjoy drawing the filigree on this one. Very therapeutic, that. I got myself some Lamy pencils. I'm going to do a video on those soon, but I just wanted to try them out and I had to put this piece of tracing paper in because they run terribly. If I put any pressure on, it would have ruined the picture opposite. It doesn't look terribly exciting, but you can do some really fun things with those. And here we have another Christopher Hart drawing book practice. Lots of this all the way through. You can see there's another one. And this is just, I'll move it over. Now this was a rough sketch I was doing and try, trying to get some ideas because I was going to draw a girl at the fun fair. I'll put a link below to this video in case you wanted to watch it. It's a speed drawing, speed inking, speed painting of this girl at the fun fair. I sign every picture just about now. And the reason for that is these are never coming out of my sketchbook, but I'm trying to get a signature I'm happy with that I can do quickly. It generally looks the same. I was putting a heart instead of a dot, but oh, I gave up on that. Bit too twee and wasn't working very well. So this is the kanji symbol for funny, apparently. Oh, I don't think I could get funny. I think I had to use humorous or something like that. That was a very technical one. And then I decided, let's try a little bit of watercolour because you always associate manga with markers. Well, I do anyway. All the manga art I've seen has been with markers. It's much more difficult, I found, with watercolour because I'm trying to learn how to control watercolour plus I'm trying to blend the watercolour on something that is normally not in this style. But I quite enjoyed doing it and it did make me have a very squishy sketchbook. I try to put this panda in wherever I can with manga because I have a panda called Monkey Panda who was rescued from being trodden into a path. Poor old panda. He's fine now though. Lots more drawing in this style as you can see. We're now to the 12th of August. I am a prolific drawer. I just love to draw to relax in the evenings. So I get a lot of drawing done. I love adding backgrounds and these bubbles I thought were lovely. Can't beat a good bubble, especially a coloured one. Now this girl here I wasn't so keen on. She looks like she's got something in her hand, like a knife or something, doesn't she? 
but she's actually supposed to be catching a frisbee. Okay, she looks nothing like she's catching a frisbee, but she is supposed to look like that. I tried inking in here with a red ink, which was supposed to be permanent, yet when I did the watercolour over the top, it blurred it, but I quite like the ethereal look of that, so I was quite pleased. I didn't mind at all. I love this one. I don't know if it's the colour or the thought of going Christmas shopping, but I really like that. And then I thought I'd just try out some faces, try out some hairstyles, because I was concentrating so hard on the manga. I think it's easy, if, especially as a beginner, if you don't keep up something, you tend to lose the edge. So I just wanted to draw a couple of normal faces and colour them in with watercolour. And here we have more drawing practice from Christopher Hart. And I've learned such a lot doing this. You'd think, oh, it's just drawing manga. But my face drawing and my anatomy drawing and my clothing drawing has just come on a million times since I have started following these books. So even though some of them are very difficult and it can be quite off-putting, you think, oh, I'm never going to manage that. When I got to that point, I think, no, I'm doing this. And if it's a mess, it doesn't matter. As long as I've learned something from it, learned how not to make such a bad mess again. And they came out quite well. It, at this point, it was taking me about an hour just to draw the pencil drawing before I went on to anything else. Now, two books later, I can draw a pencil drawing of something like this in about 10 minutes. Perhaps 20 if it's a really difficult pose. And then I tried out something with my Lamy pencils here, just a little sketch. They work a little bit like oil pastels, but they're also water soluble. So you can get your paintbrush and blend the colours in. I haven't got the full set and I really wanted the full set, but they're quite expensive. So I went on eBay, found somebody who didn't have two colours and I really wanted the skin tone and it didn't have the skin tone. But still, I got them for a fraction of the price I'd have paid new. And then again, another piece of tracing paper to cover this drawing. Now this drawing, somebody bought me something off my Amazon wish list, and it was one of those glass pens with lots of different colour inks. So to try it out, I just did lots of line shading, and I'm quite pleased with the way it came out. It was quite fun to do, very therapeutic, sitting there for ages just drawing lines. Even if sometimes <laughs> they weren't as straight as they could be. We'll just cover that up. Right, moving on, we have more manga drawings and I don't know if you can see these are metallic paints and glitter paints I painted the dress pink with watercolour and then went over the top with the glitter paint and this is a metallic paint in her hair as well I just look so nice pandas everywhere and I quite like the background on this one I like drawing plants and things because you can't get them wrong, really. They're very flexible. It's not like drawing a face where you have to be so regimented. You can just throw caution to the wind when it comes to plants. And these were just some various shades of lines with my paintbrush. And then dots of Posca pen and very concentrated watercolour over the top for flowers. I love these. There was a little bit of practice for shoes in Christopher Hart's book, so I did those. And I think my favourites are that one and that one. Interestingly enough, they are the two boldest, most standing out shoes. So I wonder if maybe I'm coloured by that. Because this boot is quite cute. And this train is quite cute as well. More practice from Christopher Hart, but I decided I'd do some hollyhocks. I'm pleased with those and this I saw a video and I can't remember whose video it was showing how you could do a three-dimensional painting just very easily and you can look into the forest if anybody recognizes this then please let me know in the comments who it was right we have somebody going shopping with more hearts and I'll turn this around Give my camera a few seconds to focus. I can't actually see if it is focused on my computer. My camera tends to pick up on things I don't want it to pick up on. So here we have a fairy with some toadstools. I love drawing toadstools and this one was such fun. 
moving my cloth all around the place. There we go. That's a bit straighter, I think. Mm, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think. Right, let's move on. So now we have more drawing practice from a book by Christopher Hart. And I just drew this myself. I was really pleased with everything other than the hairband. I should really have done it in a different colour. I think green would have looked nice to go with the foliage underneath, but the pink just merged in and looks a mush. The, there's no contrast at all there between the hair and the headband, is there? Really like this bit though. And more manga practice. This, I just made a quick sketch to put up on my Instagram account so people could ask me some questions and when I was doing a speed paint, I could answer the questions. So I had a few questions, really good ones, and I may do that again. It's really interesting to find out what people want to know. A little bit more practice with my Lamy pencils and you can see here just how badly this marks the paper. And I didn't want to spoil this. I quite enjoy playing with the background. It's probably not a really clever thing to do. Maybe some people will see it as splodgy, but I'm experimenting with my watercolours and seeing what different techniques do. I quite enjoy doing that. Very therapeutic, blobbing water onto the watercolour. More practice. And this was just a design that I've made that I'm going to probably do with my Lamy pencils. See how that comes out. And I thought it was nice to have a different colour around the outside other than black because this sort of style of drawing often comes with black outlines and I didn't want that. So I went for the green and I think it works quite well. Maybe red would go well too. So oh, these are just some ideas for characters. I'm working on a book and I needed some really simple designs. So I just was playing about with my pencil and my watercolour just to see if I could come up with any ideas and then more practice of manga. More manga practice. Ice cream. Ooh, can't beat a bit of ice cream. And I really enjoy using the pastel colours here because ice cream just brings to mind pastel colours. This is more practice. She's supposed to have looked as if she was being lit by the light from the TV. I don't think I captured that as well as I could have. Lighting is such a difficult thing to capture. I find it anyway. But I'm sure if I persevere, I'll get there in the end. And here we have another take on the Lamy pencil art with hearts. I wasn't so keen on this. But I popped it in anyway because it's nice and bright and cheerful. Brightens up my sketchbook. This was my plan because I did a video you may have seen on how to draw a doodle poodle. And I'll leave a link to doodle poodle below or on the end screen. I'm not quite sure which is going to be the easiest. And more drawing practice with another kanji symbol which is exhausted. Now, this is interesting. <laughs> I can see the continuity issue here. She's eating some pokies. Pockies? I'm not quite sure. I'd like to try pockies. I told my son next time he goes to a shop where they sell them to bring me some back because I've never tried pockies. And here's her eating a pocky, which is twice the length of the pocky box. So I didn't really think that one through, did I? And this is the kanji symbol for boring because she's supposed to be doing her homework. And she's not really enjoying it, is she? Look at that expression. I like this one. I don't know if it's the face or the colours or what, but that really appeals to me. And I've actually done quite dark on her face. It's something I'm struggling with. I'm always worried I'm going to make the face too dark. And then when I finished, I'm really discontented because the face is too light. But it's scary putting dark colours on. I'm getting there. More manga practice. As you can see, there is quite a lot of manga in the beginning of this book, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And as I say, it was worth every minute because I've come on so much just by following that book. It really was a benefit to me. I'd recommend those books to anyone. Even if you're not into manga, it still does teach you 
a fair bit about anatomy. Now, I know manga anatomy is a bit weird compared to normal anatomy, but it just gives you that understanding of where things will go proportionally. You've just got to shrink their heads and their eyes quite a bit if you want something more natural looking. We're down to the 18th of September now, still working away at my sketchbook. I like this one. I like the cat and I like her painting. And there are some rough sketches and the cat is sleeping on them, completely oblivious. And here are two girls playing cards with a cookie jar. Oh, you can't see. There we go. I'll hold that up like that. I was waiting for something to download on the computer. I was bored, so I thought, let's try drawing a witch. I didn't draw Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh was already on the bit of paper I used, and then I tore it out and stuck it in. And some more practice drawing a little person. More manga practice. And this is the kanji for... Oh, I haven't written it down. Sh no, friendship, I think. I think. I could be wrong. <laughs> if anybody can read kanji, please let me know what that says. And then we got a little bit of practice with some new paints I had. And I decided to draw a little whimsical village. So I did. For this, I used my watercolour markers and a water brush. I just did the edges in the watercolour pens and then spread the water inwards and it gave this lovely shaded effect. It was fun to do and I think I'd like to do more of these whimsy things. And we got some more manga and these I had some gouache paints. And I just thought I'd try them out the night before and this is what I came up with. And then I cut them out and put them in my sketchbook. I love the fact you can use gouache on black paper. I'm going to make myself a black paper sketchbook, I think. And just keep it for gouache. Nothing terribly exciting here. I just put some paint on the page. I didn't even think about it. And then got my fine liners out. And then tried to turn things into something. So these splodges turn into a tree with the sun. And these splodges turned into something rather strange. We've got a submarine and what else have we got? Oh, there's a koi carp and some balloons and a weird face. And a pair of lips, as you do. This mat is all over the shop, isn't it? It's not a mat, it's actually a piece of fabric. I love this fabric. It's just so slippery on my table. I put this in here. This is my kitchen towel that I use to wipe off the brush when I'm making watercolour paintings. And I was about to throw it away and thought, oh, I actually like that. So I glued it in my sketchbook. Why not? And then we got another manga girl with a panda in her hair. And balloons. I love balloons. They're as much fun as bubbles. Another manga girl with some cupcakes. And then I decided to try out some pumpkins. So, October was coming, I thought give them a try, and I quite enjoy doing these. I love these shapes of pumpkins, this sort of spludgy one. It looks as if it's just collapsed in a heap, doesn't it? And a cat sleeping on that one. And more pumpkin designs. I was trying to come up with an idea to draw some pumpkins and then paint them with my gouache paints. And so I was just trying out some different designs. I really like these with faces. And I like the fact they don't look too sinister because some can look a bit sinister. They look happy and friendly and you wouldn't mind meeting those on a dark night, would you? And then I painted this and I'm not happy with it. It seemed like a good idea at the time. It's just that it didn't work. It's supposed to be a pumpkin house. I think it looks more like a Volkswagen caravanette or a camper van. Don't you live and learn, I now know how not to draw a pumpkin. I'm subscribed to somebody called Visual Mind. And this is one of their paintings that I thought I'd try. I have my metallic paints on there. And gouache. So simple, so easy. Just a couple of layers. A couple of little blobs for trees and lines. And you've got yourself something quite passable. as a landscape picture. Even though it's painted portrait. Moving on. So this was a painting of pumpkins with my gouache paints 
I love the colour on this one. It's my favourite colour of all, I think. But you can't trust me because I've also painted a picture of pumpkins for a video and I keep changing my mind. Is this one my favourite? Is one of those my favourite? And then I look again and all oh, different ones are my favourite. I just love pumpkins. More manga practice. And more manga practice with some nice shiny metallic bits. Ooh. Here's just a little doll shape. I'm just thinking about Christmas very tentatively because we're still only in October at this point, but Christmas is coming and I want to just have one part of my mind on what am I going to draw for my Christmas drawings. And then some more manga practice. This was just me playing about. I didn't have long, so I just threw a couple of colour pencil lines, washed them with my water brush and moved on. Right, now I've been looking at Halloween things. I have some magic ink that I want to draw a doodle with. So I'm just coming up with ideas. This as a whole of where I would be putting things. I'm not sure I'm happy with it. I think it, it's possibly a bit plain here. Or does that give the eye somewhere to rest? I'm not sure yet. And then some other little doodle things that I could use for my Halloween doodle if I wanted to. It's always good to have a stock of ideas before you start a doodle, otherwise you get halfway through, your brain goes blank and you're like, I don't know what to put in this space. So it's always useful to have a little library of things you can use. I'll start doing these a page at a time now because there's such a difference in the depth and if my camera focuses on the wrong bit, you won't be able to see. This is a trial run for another one of my videos where I did a girl with her hair blowing in the wind. With the one for the video, I did her at an angle too because I wanted to make it something other than a static pose. But I love the hair and I love the colour on this. One thing I have noticed, when I put green on my images, I don't get as many likes as when I don't put them on over on Instagram. And red, even if my drawing is something I'm not that happy with, tends to draw in some likes. It's really funny. So I could put a lovely green drawing on that I'm pleased with doesn't go down too well and then I put an awful red image on and it does okay. So here are some Christmas doodles ready for when I draw my Christmas things and my Christmas big doodles. Some little ideas of characters and I need to come up with some shapes and items now. And this is the last drawing I've done from the Christopher Hart books and I've decided as much as I enjoy them and I've thoroughly enjoyed having a structure working from one end of the book to the other I need to go with a different artist now to learn or try looking at various things or I'm going to get myself locked into this being my, the only style I can draw. So I've bitten the bullet. I've refused to buy myself any more Christopher Hart books for the moment. No doubt I'll get back into them in a few months. But I'm going to have a break and try other styles. So this is just an idea I've had for making a picture called Find the Pumpkin. And you've got to find the pumpkins. See how many you can see. Some are obvious, some not so obvious. So I'm going to work on that for a video, I think. And when I was getting ready to do my video for the person with the hair blowing, I just did a few little quick sketches and this is those. You may have seen them if you've already seen the video. I like this Medusa look though. this was just a colourful playful way to fill a page. It was really relaxing. I'd had a busy day and I thought hmm I could do with something that's no stress, doesn't tax my brain at all and I did this. It looks really pretty. I suppose it would look even better if I did some sort of text in a rounded cornered box and stuck it on there. Hmm I'll think about that. And now I'm working on a book on how to draw Enchanted Kingdoms and this is the work I've done so far. Working with watercolour, oh it's completely different to drawing manga. I am amazed at how much more taxing this is. I really thought I was getting somewhere with my watercolours with manga and I feel like I've taken a huge step back. But it's just because it's a different style, it's a different genre of painting watercolours and so it's doing me the world of good. So I'm going to stick with it. I'm 
to you are another two versions of the same castle, just with different colourings, which gives you a different atmosphere around the castles. This is my favourite, and I think not because it's eye-catching, not because it's appealing, but because it's the best of the four when it comes to skillful painting. I like that one. I'd painted my castles. It was almost time for bed, but not quite. So I thought, oh, let's pop a few flowers on a page. So I did. This is upside down. Doodle flowers. And I forgot to put the L in. Oh, I was having a bad day that day. But I did all these flowers and I've got them down. They're not merging together into one coherent picture but I want again lots of different flower things that I can use to give me inspiration when I'm drawing a bigger doodle and a monstera or a cheese plant I tried doing a pattern down here I didn't like it so I stuck some washi tape on for any of you who've studied monstera leaves there are no holes I completely forgot about the holes and I worked hard getting the edges right and trying to get everything looking tidy and forgot the holes There's a doodle I coloured in and I had some washi tape. Now, I love washi tape but the one was so thin I couldn't think of anything that I could do with it really. So I used it to make a diamond shape pattern or grid on my page and then just played about with my watercolours. Putting the colour on the outside and then drawing it to the middle with some water and seeing how the different colours reacted. That was really interesting to do and again so therapeutic. It's one of those things that will fill a page in your sketchbook and relax you at the same time. These are two drawings from my book How to Draw Fairy Wonderlands or Enchanted Wonderlands. I'll put the name on screen, I can never remember. So I left the pencil lines on here because I find it interesting these are not done for any spectacular, oh, I want them to be seen and loved. I like the working marks on this, so you can see just how I got the perspective working. I like those. And then finally, this back sheet here stuck to the back of the sketchbook. I would scribbled on it to check if my pens were working. I would beaten it up. It had marks on it. There's a big paint streak up. So I thought I'll use it as a finished page. So this sketchbook was finished on the 12th of October 2020 and I've already started my next one. So that is sketchbook six of my art journey. If you'd like to follow me on my art journey join me and see how I develop and pick up hints and tips that I'm picking up to make things easier to make things quicker to learn then why not subscribe and that way then you'll know whenever I put out any new videos or in the future when I go live which I will be doing at some point. Don't forget, before you go, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you all next time. But until then, don't forget, draw every day and have fun. Bye!